Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. <clears throat> Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about the recently announced fight between Saul Alvarez and Alfredo Angulo. Now let me just say, in my opinion, the choice by Alvarez of Angulo as an opponent is a tacit admission by Canelo that he has a problem with movement. He just faced Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather moved around the ring right after the first round where Mayweather came right at him. Canelo swung and missed frequently in that fight. He couldn't time Mayweather. He couldn't get close to Mayweather. Forget the scoring. You knew that that fight was over early when you realize that unless Canelo suddenly developed some foot speed, he wasn't going to get close enough to Mayweather to hurt him. Right? The fight, quite frankly, really wasn't that competitive. It wasn't as good as Miguel Cotto against Floyd Mayweather. So now in his first fight back, Canelo is apparently trying to rebuild his own confidence. He's picked the guy who isn't going to move away from him, isn't going to move a lot laterally. Rather, Angulo's philosophy is that pressure busts pipes. He's going to be right up on Canelo. He's going to be pushing the issue in the fight. Right? Canelo's not going to have to move to find Angulo. Because Angulo is going to be at his front door all night long. Now let me say this. Canelo is a young guy in his mid-twenties. In my opinion, you know, we all gain weight as we get older, most of us at least. The weight gain's catching up to him. Right? He's a guy who, quite frankly, seems, in my opinion, to have stamina and volume issues. Hey, this is online. I'm not some corporate sponsor or some journalist hoping to curry favor with Canelo. I'm just a degenerate gambler looking for an edge on the casino. Right? Canelo's volume, quite frankly, is a concern. It's depressed. He has the kind of lower volume you would expect from a guy in his 30s who's winding down his career, not a young guy in his 20s. Also, don't be fooled by catchweight controversies. Even if the fight was at 154 pounds, Canelo would have had issues making weight. You know that just by looking at a film of the weigh-in of the Floyd Mayweather fight. If you looked at Canelo, if you know boxing, you know what Canelo looks like, then you saw him at the weigh-in. And if your first or second reaction was, man, he looks slender, then you know he doesn't walk around at that weight normally. Now, it wouldn't matter if he's younger and he's able to bounce back from the weight gain, then the weight loss, and then the subsequent weight gain, but it's impacted his volume in a way that it hasn't impacted the volume of Alfredo Angulo, who weighed 174 pounds. You heard me right. 174 pounds. On the night of his last fight against Erislandi Lara. Now let me say this. <clears throat> when I say that the weight yo-yoing is catching up to Canelo, let me go further. Even though he has beaten lightweight champion Miguel Vasquez in the past, if they were to work out some weight, let's say in the, you know, where Vasquez came in weighing, let's say 145, 147, I take Vasquez over Canelo right now. I think Canelo's movement issues and stamina issues are a big concern 
that render him vulnerable to a mover. Now in this fight, rather than pick a winner, because unlike I'm sure most experts, I view this fight as close. What I'm going to do is to make a recommendation that you take both guys by KO. I think that'll give you decent odds because typically in fights like this, you're going to get leverage on one side of the play that you could apply to the other side of the play. Canelo, I'm sure, is going to be a big favorite. I haven't seen the odds on the fight. The Canelo by KO prop might even be depressed. It might be, let's say, a minus 200 or less, right? You know, but you're going to get such outsized odds on Angulo by KO because, of course, Canelo has never been knocked out. That you should be able to fool around with the amounts you bet on each side. You're not going to bet the same amount on each side. You're going to fool around with the amounts you bet on each side. So that if either guy wins by KO, you win the fight. You beat the casino. Also, what you should do is pay close attention to the distance of the fight. I know two rounds doesn't seem like a lot. Two rounds is a lot. When you're betting that the fight ends inside of the distance. Right? Preferably, they'll make this a 12-round fight. Right? If they make it 12, then you might want to bet more than you would bet if it's only 10 rounds. Right? Now, let's talk about why this fight may not go the distance. First, Alfredo Angulo's eye. Now, let me say this. I understand it was a hematoma. I understand that his orbital bone was not fractured, but that eye swelled up enormously in the last fight. And let me just say what I've found is sometimes when a guy has an eye that swollen in a fight, if you hit it, the next time the guy's in the ring, that eye might swell up again. Right, I believe everyone in the ring, Canelo, the referee, Angulo, is going to be conscious of Angulo's eye. Right? In my opinion, what happened in the last fight, Angulo's eye blowing up, Angulo pulling the plug on the fight, makes it more likely that this fight could end inside of the distance. Just keep in mind the Antonio Margarito, Miguel Cotto rematch. Right? There was concern about the eye. You could tell that the ringside doctor was hyper about the eye. Right here, the ringside doctor is going to know that the last Angulo fight stopped because of Angulo's eye. These injuries matter. Let me also say, too, if you look into Angulo's history, you're going to see a guy who drops people early. Right? I know Angulo is a volume guy. But Angulo dropped James Kirkland in the first round. Right? Forget what happened after that. The point is simply, Angulo early overwhelms opponents. Erislandi Lara, master technician, down in the fourth round of their fight. Go through Angulo's record. You're going to see a lot of guys hitting the canvas. And Angulo fights early. By the way, Angulo keeps bringing it. I don't believe he has the full-blown problems that Canelo has. Keep in mind, he drops Arislandi Lara a second time later in that fight. Right? So, Alfredo Angulo is a guy who comes in, is throwing hard punches, and is throwing heavy volume. Let me point out, Canelo, in my opinion, is one of the hardest punchers in the entire sport, in any weight class. Right now, while he doesn't have the big volume, he has a punch that really is one punch knockout power. Right? If he lands that left hook, game over. 
Well, guess what? Alfredo Angulo is going to be there to trade with him. I think somebody's going to get popped. Right? Angulo's not the kind of guy who goes into a shell during a shootout. We know that. Just look at the James Kirkland film. Kirkland gets knocked down. Angulo steps in. Angulo gets knocked down. The bullets start flying. Right? No let up. Angulo's not a guy who suddenly gets on his back foot and starts to turtle. That's not him. He fights fire with fire. Right? Let me also say, too, that I don't think the public realizes how explosive this fight's going to be because Matthew Hatton went the distance with Saul Alvarez. Right? Saul Alvarez went the distance his last fight against Floyd Mayweather. Those guys are different fighters than Angulo. Right? Those guys don't show up and then figure that they're going to trade with you. Think about it, too. The one thing you know about Angulo is like James Kirkland, he's going to cut off the ring on you. There are going to be times where you're up on the ropes against him. Now, if you're Everslandy Lara, if you have that level of lateral movement, you can move laterally and get away from him. But take a look at that Lara fight. How often does Lara just stand there and trade with him? Let me tell you, Canelo is going to try to stand there and trade with him, right? I'm expecting fireworks. I'm expecting a fight inside of the distance. I view this fight as too dangerous to pick a side. Nor would I want to pick a side when there's low-hanging fruit here on picking the fight inside of the distance. The way I would play this is not to fool around with over-unders. Just take both guys to win by KO. You should get such ridiculous leverage on Alfredo Angulo to win by KO that you should be able to apply some of that leverage to the Saul Alvarez side of the bet. Right? So let's say Saul Alvarez is a minus 200 to win by KO. I'm just making up these odds here, right? Check the odds when the fight is officially announced and the casinos respond with lines. But let's say Canelo's a minus 200 to win by KO. If you're getting a plus 300 on Angulo to win by KO, you can actually make the bet work if you juggle the numbers. Keep in mind, too, Angulo is someone who has stopped people in the first, second, and third rounds of fights. Right? Saul Alvarez is someone who, if you go back and you look at the fight between himself and Miguel Cotto's older brother, you'll see that Canelo at times has started slow and has been roughed up early. Angulo is someone who it's hard to figure out the angles of his punches. Right? The guy was even able to land flush on defensive master Arislandi Lara. Right? Don't kid yourself. In my opinion, Lara would beat Canelo. Lara is much better defensively than Canelo, and he's much more athletic than Canelo. Right? I'm guessing that's how Alfredo Angulo views the fight. He probably feels he's already fought tougher than Canelo. Keep in mind, win, lose, or draw, the guy's been in the ring against Kirkland and Lara. Right? He's faced a very aggressive fighter in Kirkland, right? Aggressive on a level that Canelo's not. And he's faced a defensive wizard and better athlete than Canelo and Arislandi Lara. I know my comments are going to be controversial to some. I know they don't fit into the HBO Golden Boy Powers That Be narrative. But let's just call it as we see it. Okay, so, I believe you're going to have an unafraid Alfredo Angulo on his front foot against one of the hardest punchers in the sport, in Saul Alvarez, trying to get the bad taste out of his mouth of being embarrassed, and that's the word that comes to mind, by Floyd Mayweather. 
I'm expecting a stoppage. I don't know who gets it. I like both guys to win by KO on a hedge play. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Tell me if I'm being unfair to Canelo. Don't get me wrong. I think Canelo is an excellent fighter. But I think this pace is going to be a problem for him. I think the size of the man in front of him is going to be a challenge for him. Right? I think that Angulo intuitively has more volume and outright aggression than Saul Alvarez. Right? One of the problems with Angulo is he's going to run a lot of red lights. Right? He'll dare. Saul Alvarez to open up on him, right? Alvarez might be able to open up and close the show on him. But while Canelo tries to do that, Alfredo Angulo is going to be trying to close the show on Saul Alvarez. Expect fireworks. I think somebody gets dropped and stopped in this one. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.